Hello, everybody. When YouTubers speak on an issue that is normally not relevant to what they say, or maybe it is always relevant to what they say. Maybe they're like Marina Shut Up or um, Cat Black, and they always talk about these things. I think a lot of people blame um, any YouTuber that speaks up about an issue as being self-righteous, overly liberal, uneducated, just shut up and be pretty. And I think it's all in response to this perception of how we think that we're always right and how we think that we know better. I just wanted to respond to that backlash by openly admitting that, hey, like, I am a human being. I can be really idiotic about stuff sometimes. I grew up, you know, with the perception of how certain people of certain ethnicities or religions can be. That's what happens when you're a single human entity. Like, you have a limited perspective on the world. Um, and that's totally okay. That doesn't make you a bad person. Um, you know, and I, and I also wanted to acknowledge that, you know, a lot of the mistakes and idiotic things that I've said before, not on this channel, but just in my life in general, is a result of certain privileges that I have. Um, I'm, I'm not a white person and I don't necessarily have white privilege, but I do have a lot of privilege. You know, I come from a middle class family. Um, I'm Asian and that, and I admit that I am one of the most privileged, um, people of color in this country. You know, like we on average have more access to education just resources in general, like we have an average very high income when it, um, in comparison to a lot of people of color, you know, because there is the stereotype of us being, you know, hard workers. And even though I don't like any stereotypes to hold people down, like I do benefit from that stereotype. And I totally admit that. My background has prevented me from, you know, interacting and just having general empathy for certain groups of people until I, um, started to be more exposed to them. I didn't grow up with a lot of black friends. I didn't grow up with a lot of people that grew up broke. I, d I didn't grow up with a lot of Latino friends. You know, most of my community was white and Asian and that formed a lot of the way that I looked at the world. It wasn't until I took a sociology class at Berkeley that I started understanding why I thought about people that the way that I thought of about them. I probably would not be making this video if it wasn't for that sociology class. You know, a sociology class that I also understand I have access to because of my privilege. You know, like I paid for that class for, I paid for college and so I paid for that class. You know, I've traveled out of the country a lot more often than a lot of my other friends because of the resources and because of the income and the wealth that my family has. I've thought before that that a certain race of people are lazy. I thought I thought that a certain, a certain group of people just weren't ge genetically disposed to work hard, as hard as me, you know, and all of those things were wrong. And like, it, it took me some time to, to realize this because it's something that I grew up thinking for a while, um, it wasn't a form of hatred. It was, you know, all of these little messages that you get from either, you know, your friend circle, your family circle, from the media, to some degree or other, we're raised to be prejudiced towards something. You know, we're 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 raised to look at homeless people and think that they they're just too lazy to get a job. We're we're raised to look at black people and think that they're a certain way. We're raised to look at Asian people. I was raised to look at myself a certain way. I was raised to look at Latino people a certain way. I was raised to look at Native Americans a certain way. I, in fact, I think I was raised to think that Native Americans don't exist anymore. Like, like you get all of these subtle messages from, from literally everywhere. Like, like we all don't exist in a vacuum. Um, we are unfortunately an amalgamation of all of the things that we see and all of the people that we meet. Even to this day, when I talk to people about, you know, like important issues that might not, that I might not be comfortable with, I make mistakes and sometimes I have the instinct to be very defensive about um, my knowledge because, you know, I want to tell myself that I know more than I actually know. I'm, I'm, I'm still working on it. Like, I'm not, like, like, I don't, I don't sit around, like, at a, at, I don't sit around, like, sipping tea with people just talking about the problems of the world like intelligently and thinking that I know better than everybody. The whole point of all of these things that I'm saying is that I want to openly acknowledge that maybe in the past, maybe in the future, like I'm gonna be wrong about things in my personal life, on this channel, on Twitter, on Instagram. I, I am going to be wrong and I have been wrong. And, and that's totally okay because that doesn't make me a bad person. I'm learning. It's how I respond to these mistakes that I made and it's how I respond to people that tell me that I've made a mistake from a group that I am hurting that makes me a good or a bad person. Me having a certain type of privilege does not make me a bad person. It doesn't make you a bad person either. Me being Asian and not properly understanding, you know, the, the, the black struggle or the Latino struggle or the Native American struggle or the trans struggle, 
does not make me a bad person. Failing to listen to people would make me a bad person. Not being willing to listen to people that are outside of my experience would make me a bad person. Not listening would make me a bad person. That's what would make you a bad person. I'm saying all of these things because I want to show you, the viewer, whoever you are, to see how easy it is to admit that you're wrong. I've been wrong so many times. I will be wrong so many times and I will get it wrong, but that is not gonna stop me from trying to be the best person that I can be. I want to be a better citizen of the world and I think that's something that ev anybody can want to be. And it's not about being the perfect person. It's not about making the best decisions all of the time. It's just always doing your best and and to always listen. Like privilege, you're like any type of limited experience does not make you a bad person because you are human. Of course you have limited experience. It's important to have the willingness to be wrong because in every single horrible thing that has happened in the world, especially when it comes to race or gender or sexual orientation or, you know, gender identity, things go really, really bad when someone thinks that they know better. So it's, it's important to be kind to yourself and to be patient with your limited experience, but also understand that it's not just about you and to never think that you know better than someone. You should always approach a conversation or a disagreement with a, a desire to understand the other side and not to crush the other side. <laughs> I, know, I know I said before that it's important to take action, but it's also a really important time to look inward too, because change also needs to start with you. If you don't understand a situation and if you don't understand like the behavior of a very large group of people, it's so important for you to like just do your research and listen. And we have access to all this information on the internet. Like you can't just stay in, in your bubble and think that, you know, oh, these people have it worse because it's, it's, it's their fault. They're just lazy or they're just violent. It's important for you to like research on, to, to, to do your research because, because usually everything is not what it seems. Uh, I see a lot of YouTubers saying that it's important to love each other more. But I think what's more important is for us to understand each other more. I'm still struggling with this too, but it's so important to stop thinking that you know best. Put aside your pride and learn about something outside yourself because that is how you become a better citizen of the world. With the internet, it's so easy to, you know, start a channel and start a blog and to like, you know, become the self-proclaimed expert on things. Even though it's a great way to put yourself out there, it is also a very toxic way to fortify yourself in your own beliefs. There's always going to be people that agree with you and to, and it can be very easy as humans to just hide yourself in the people that agree with you and never think that you might be in the wrong for something. But the fact is that sometimes like, like it's important to every now and then just check yourself. And, and, and to see if there's anything that you need to improve about yourself. I think we have a very skewed view of self-love. We we think that self-love is like loving who you are and anybody that tells you uh, that tells you that you're wrong is a hater and should be dismissed immediately. That's not necessarily true. Self Self-love should also consist of loving yourself enough to allow yourself to change and to be open to things that you might not immediately agree with. Having some kind of privilege because we all have it is it's, it's an okay thing to have. It's all about just properly wielding that privilege and being aware of it and acknowledging it. Bravery is not is not just about being right all the time and like standing up to people that disagree with you. It's bravery is also admitting that you're wrong. Think about that. Let's be brave and admit certain privileges that we have. Talk about your privileges and what could possibly limit your experience. It's a really healthy thing to do and it makes us all better people in the long run, I think. Thank you so much for listening to me. I really, really appreciate you. Um, yeah. I'll see you later. Bye.